Welcome to Firebase release notes for March. And we have eight recent updates from Firebase today, so let's dig in right away. Our authentication SDKs for C++ and Unity now have a method to send a verification message to the existing email address for an account before updating it to the new email address. This is all still part of our protection against email enumeration attacks, which is turned on by default for all projects that were created after September 15. And for Flutter developers, our Flutter Fire CLI is the easiest way to add Firebase to your apps. We improved how the CLI uploads Xcode symbol files to Crashlytics so that it works for every build type and flavor of your app for Apple platforms. We also updated the build.gradle that's generated for Android builds to match with Flutter version 3.16.5. And we'll promote this dev release of the Flutter Fire CLI to GA in the coming weeks. Last month, I mentioned that our Flutter SDKs for Firestore, Authentication, and Storage now support WASM builds. Well, in the past few weeks, we also updated the SDKs for calling cloud functions and for AppCheck. So more and more Flutter apps that use Firebase can now get the performance improvements of the new WASM runtime. If you use Terraform to automate the creation of new projects, you can now set up AppCheck support in those scripts too. Here's just a snippet that you need to protect your Firestore database if you have an app for Apple platforms. And here's a more complete example for Android apps that you can find in the documentation that I link below. Today, you can turn on AppCheck via Terraform for a real-time database, Firestore, authentication, and cloud storage. Other Firebase products will be added soon. You can now use AppCheck to protect Google OAuth clients in your iOS apps, even when the app doesn't use Firebase authentication. An OAuth client ID represents your app's brand. You can now use Firebase AppCheck together with Apple's app test service to protect them. When you enforce this AppCheck protection on your iOS OAuth clients, requests made by apps are only allowed if they are accompanied by a valid AppCheck token. Check the blog post that I linked for full details and examples. When you use our JavaScript SDK to access Firestore data in your web apps, you can now choose to only listen to data in the local cache. This new type of listener will not connect to the database server to get documents or updates, but it will only listen for data in that local cache. A cache-only listener will detect all local cache updates, like those that happen when you add a document on the local client and when you trigger an update from the server elsewhere in your code. For many projects, a large portion of their Firestore cost comes from reading documents from the server. So this is a great new tool that you can use to control those costs. We added the ability to schedule backups for Firestore back in August. But until now, you had to schedule them by running the gCloud CLI tool. Well, we just added the ability to schedule those backups to the Firebase CLI too, and we're working to allow you to schedule backups in the web UI. And finally, we have a sneak preview of a feature that is rolling out to Firestore as we speak. You can now have range and inequality conditions on multiple fields in the query, which allows you to write queries that were previously impossible, like this one. Or look at this query for appointments from 9 to 5. This used to require that you use appointment slots, but now you can write it with range conditions on the starts head and end head fields. This new feature has a lot of implications for the types of queries that you can write for Firestore, for their performance guarantees, and for their cost. So check the written release notes, the updated documentation, the blog post, and the other materials on this topic. Those were all the updates we have for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.